Hello, my name is Brian Germain, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about the terminology of flight. So the first three terms that we need to discuss um, are the orientation terms that describe the rotation about the x, y, and z axes. Um, and in flight, we have very specific words uh, that correspond to these arbitrary figures. So we have pitch, which is nose up, nose down, right? So a negative pitch change would be dropping the nose of the aircraft, a positive change would be lifting it. Of course, there's many ways to cause this, um, but the bottom line is any change uh, to the aircraft's configuration um, will have some degree of, of pitch effect, and it is the most important because ultimately that's what controls airspeed, lift, drag, and as a result, the direction of flight big time. We also have yaw axis changes. And so when we talk about uh, pitch, that's most people know that that's nose up, nose down, you push forward on the yoke or forward on the stick or back on the stick. Uh, what they don't know in many cases is that, that the aircraft's ability to adjust its yaw axis is done with the rudder. So in the tail of the aircraft, uh, just like the tail of a fish, we have the ability to step on the rudder pedal, which noses the aircraft over in the opposite uh, direction than, than you might intuitively think. But if you sort of think of the tail as going over this way, it's going to shove the tail over, and then the nose goes where you want it to go. So we have control over the yaw axis independently uh, on fixed wing aircraft. We also have the ability to adjust the roll axis, right? So roll is this way. All right, so we have the, the ailerons, which affect the roll axis directly. We also have the ability to move the weight side to side, which will do the same thing. Uh, but generally, we move the aircraft's roll axis by the ailerons, which are like little flaps that go opposite to each other out near the wingtip. Now, these are not flaps. Flaps are used to slow down and get down. But the aileron input, controlled by the movement of the stick side to side or the yoke in rotation, cause this one to go up and this one to go down. And when the one goes up on this side, it drives that wing down. The one at the back of the wing that goes down drives this wing up and we have roll axis manipulation. So the air, aircraft is essentially being turned into a big propeller just for a moment. So why do we have two independent controls uh, for the, the, the roll and the yaw? Well, that's because we have to align the aircraft's fuselage to the relative wind. When you fly a turn, you have to think in terms of the airflow coming past the aircraft. If you're flying straight, it's very simple. But it's when you start a turn, the balance of power of these two variables, of the roll and the yaw, can either be skewed towards the yaw, where you don't have a lot of roll, but you have a lot of yaw, and then you're sliding sideways through the air. And then you also have the ability to, to under yaw where you overroll and under yaw, right? So you're, you're kind of sliding sideways. And all of these things have, have function in aerobatics where you do deliberately uh, alter that yaw axis relationship to the relative wind. Uh, but in, in normal flight, we want that aircraft to be pointed straight at the airflow to minimize drag and to maximize control. And the most important aspect of control comes back to that initial idea of pitch because pitch increases the angle of attack, right? That's the angle of the wing to the relative wind. So the interaction of those two uh, very important ideas are gonna cause an increase or, or decrease in lift. When you increase the angle of attack, you increase lift and you increase drag. So the tendency is to slow down. Then you have, of course, um, the, the this relationship affecting the drag value of the overall aircraft's form, which will slow you down or speed you up. So when you push forward in the yoke, you gain airspeed in general. And of course, all these things are topsy-turvy when you're inverted or you're in a straight up climb or straight down. But the bottom line is if you think of pitch roll and yaw as with respect to the relative wind, it all kind of makes sense. When you think of it as with respect to the horizon, 
yeah, that can get a little bit confusing. Um, and so we have to also talk uh, about the four forces in flight. We have lift, we have thrust that drives us forward, we have weight, which is generated by the interaction of lift and gravity, and then we have drag, right? So drag is what pulls back on the aircraft relative to its thrust vector, and so the faster you go, the more drag you have. Of course, when you're in an atmosphere. When you're in space, you don't have any drag. You also don't have any lift and you, unless you generate a thrust in the opposite direction. So spaceflight is actually very simple in that regard. But when you uh, consider an aircraft flying through the fluid we call air, uh, now we have tremendous forces uh, by virtue of that aircraft's airspeed and the inertia, the stability of the system, uh, being upset. So if I was to increase the angle of attack of the aircraft, I want to go in the general direction of up, so I have this increased lift force, but that causes my body weight to increase. If I push forward on the stick, the aircraft is now going to go into a dive, collect more airspeed, and it's also going to generate less gravity experience. Now, of course, gravity is always a constant, but in flight, because you're moving, you have the capability of changing your experience of it, right? So you're generating your own gravity. So you have the ability to alter how much you weigh by what you do, and what you do will always affect what you weigh. Uh, and so I think that's, uh, that's kind of uh, an important set of, uh, of terms that will help you to understand flight more. Um, and uh, I hope that uh, you enjoyed this, this uh, short little lecture on this topic. And if you get fascinated with this stuff, pursue it. If you're interested in aviation, do your homework. Research as much as you can. And of course, on Adventure Wisdom, we have an awful lot of uh, flight safety videos that relate to these ideas and much, much more specifically as it relates to parachute flight. That's my specialty. Uh, but if you uh, want to fly airplanes, you want to fly uh, hot air balloons or anything like that, there's, the information is out there. You just got to go get it. Let your fascination and your passion drive you forward into learning more. And knowledge really is power. And ultimately, uh, knowledge is what gives you the ability to manufacture a life that is suited to who you really are, right? So learn what you want to be. I'm Brian Germain. Thanks for joining. Hello, I'm Brian Germain, and I would like to help you become a better and safer skydiver. There's a lot of information that needs to be assimilated, uh, and going to the drop zone is but one way to get that information. And as a matter of fact, it may not be the best way, uh, depending on who's teaching you and how much time uh, they have uh, to dedicate to your training. You may or may not get all the information that you, that you need in order to get through the experience safely and get through uh, your ultimate graduation to become an A-licensed skydiver. And uh, so as a, a jumper, approximately 35 years of jumping out of planes, I've, I've put together uh, quite a bit of, of uh, understanding, not the whole story, but quite a bit of understanding on the topic. And I realized quite a few years ago that if I just sat down and just sort of wrote it all out, uh, starting with a book and then writing it out into seminar uh, PowerPoints and then traveling the world teaching lots of classes all literally all over the planet. Uh, I realized that I could do a pretty good job of helping guide people through the the course stuff uh, in and get over some hurdles possibly avoid some accidents and so what I introduce to you today is something I created called Parachute Flight Safety. It's a video series um, that is eight hours long and we tack on uh, some extra materials uh, on top of the existing seven uh, different programs going from the very basic information about how parachutes fly, uh, structure and function kind of topics, all the way up through uh, more uh, advanced accuracy concepts and uh, navigational concepts uh, and the kind of stuff that you're really you're going to need to know and you'll get you'll get all this information or almost all of it if you hang in at the drop zone all the time for the next several months <laughs> but some of you haven't even gone to the drop zone yet 
and you're just sort of thinking about it. And that's the perfect time to start right here at home. Uh, you can start down the, the uh, this very long path of becoming a skydiver by studying, by learning. Uh, and this has not been done before, uh, at least to my knowledge, you know, where now we've got tests and we've got uh, you know loads of, of videos that fit in with those tests. And you take the test and you go, oh, wow, I didn't get all those questions right. Fine. Gravity doesn't grade on a curve, so I need to know all of it. And there's a time code in each of these tests where you can go back and find out in the video, you know, not just specifically what the answer was, but what you really need to know to be able to get, uh, you know, kind of get that information deeply assimilated in your mind uh, because things happen fast up there and surprises do occur. Uh, you know, you know the, the experiences that I've had have blown my mind, you know, where I, I thought for sure I kind of had an understanding of it and then boom, there's something like, ah, didn't think of that one. <laughs> didn't know that could happen. Uh, so that's why I do what I do. Uh, all these, you know, all these hours that I've spent talking to video cameras <laughs> and talking in live video conferences with folks all over the world, uh, individuals, groups, sometimes very large groups. Um, this, uh, this information seems to be really helping people. Uh, and, and some of you are going to be uh, enjoying this stuff as instructors. You're going to be learning from the material that I put together so that you can teach your students better. And I think that's great. That's, uh, that's one of my favorite aspects of teaching is, as I say, teach the teacher stuff. And I've done that in many, many countries where they gather together all the instructors from that country and I teach them how to, how to teach uh, parachute flight better because that's really the hard part and there's lots of folks that will teach you how to fly your body in free fall you just go to the wind tunnel and there are amazing people who can really refine your skills uh, in how to fly but once the parachutes open it gets complicated and so that's where a guy like me comes in all these years of designing and building parachutes and testing them, them out uh, many many hundreds of, of different prototypes that I've built and, and tested and, and learned from. And so you're going to get the benefit of that information and of the empirical analysis of data that have kind of uh, drawn some conclusions that are different, that are distinct from what is normally taught, closer to the truth of what's actually happening because uh, I prefer to attack all this stuff from the perspective of science. Of, of what is true uh, gleaned through actual tests, numbers, experiments, instruments, uh, and separating, separating out the confounding variables so that we're not uh, dealing in opinions, <laughs> we're dealing in facts. So I hope that you, you take a close uh, look at what we've got here in, in the Parachute Flight Safety video series on Adventure Wisdom. You can stream it, you can download it, uh, you can even uh, get uh, uh, a flash drive in the mail along with my book, which I think you'll find is very, very helpful as a, as a companion to this program. It's called uh, The Parachute and Its Pilot. People seem to really like it. Uh, on the fifth edition, I keep rewriting it and adding more material to it. Uh, as I continue to add more videos to the Adventure Wisdom uh, the library, that's going to help you become safer. Uh, I, I know that I, I can't help everybody avoid every hiccup in this sport. But with, uh, with enough effort on your part, I think you'll be able to, to get through this uh, in a way that is pretty smooth, that you're able to get over that initial hump uh, where you've got the information deficit uh, and you don't really know what to do in every scenario. But if you, if you fortify yourself with information, skydiving is very doable. It's a very reasonable thing to do and it is absolutely worth it best thing i've ever done so join me parachute flight safety i'll see you there as long as you're having fun well do everything so what do you choose love or fear Choose
you.